morning once again. I want to present you the result of some courses of me. So my name is Kim Kaplan. I'm professor for computer science at the Flensburg University of Applied Sciences. And I have the pleasure to develop games every year. So I get about 80 students and we develop about 15 games a year. So I want not present you not so much the details about one single specific games, but I want to uh, present you how we work in developing things. It, it might ease uh, the contact, the expectation from you as a user, or you as what we can do with games. So, and in the second part of the talk, I want to present you the first ideas of a new project which we are going to run with the Cochlear Implant Center in Schleswig, Kiel. So, that's the first game I want to talk about. It's called Doctor Vision. And you can go online and play it right now. It's online in the current version. But please, turn off the sound, yeah? This would be a little bit annoying. So, um, what we did in developing it, we developed it in a course as a student project. So I presented uh, the, the theory of game design and we already at the first lecture we try out. We, they have to invent a new idea and somehow we need some domain expert. And at the best, as a computer scientist, if you haven't got a domain expert, be your own one. So they had some experience from civilian service so they work at a hospital and they say, well, let's make a game about work running a hospital. Yeah? So it's a game about health service. And that was the first one. We did it in last year. And in the first part, I want to present a little bit about the game design aspects, then about making it project management, and then of the use of it for us as a university. And I'll switch to the next project. So let's um, discuss a little bit the attribute of the game. So it's, it's a simulation of the daily work in a hospital. So there are patients, there are nurses, there are doctors, and you've got a limited amount of beds, and the health is decreasing if you don't have the right proper treatment for the patients. So that's, that's a work. But I think the best way to explain a game is to use the game. So this is the help, uh, the help side for the, of the game. If you go to the game, it's not in English, so I translated it here to English for you. So you have patients and they have specific needs and you somehow have to visualize these specific needs. When you, we use cartoon uh, balloons, balloons to visualize needs. So first of all, they need beds in the sick room. Second, they need a nurse that, uh, to get a diagnosis. What is the problem with that patient? And then you need a doctor to determine the right treatment. So this is the sequence you have to do for every single patient. If you do it in the wrong way, uh, the doctor can't help you. So first of all, send the nurse, then the doctor. Yeah. So second thing is there are different health conditions. So please make the treatment for the most critical patient, otherwise the level will end and you, they will die. We say there are losses. Yeah? They're just losses. Yeah? One of the game's objective of the game is to reduce the amount of losses and to earn points well for the proper treatment. How we do it? You select the patient you get a response here that the blue you had selected and then you have to send him to the right sick room. So it's, it's a management game, some kind of management. You have micromanagement, you have a limited amount of beds, you want to get the most out of the number of the beds. You have to minimize or to, to meet the lifetime of the patient. Yeah, if you wait too long, the patient will die. And also, you can do medical malpractice. You can give him the right, not the right treatment. So, there might be curious effects about it. 
And for the game design, it was the hardest part was to design the interface. So it's, it's intuitive. That's what games might differ from normal programs. They have to be intuitive. Not read the fucking manual, but well, I understand it in a very, very quick way. So we decided to choose an iconic style of communicating information using some kind of cartoon style. So we have that cartoon bubbles where we place in the needs and under the cartoon bubbles we have the emotics there. So we, this is the patient in quite good condition to the, oh well, he's not that good. And <laughs> so you see here, he's needing the, the nurse and he needs it very, it's, it's very hard that need. And here there are some, some icons for diagnosis, so different problems. So you have a heart attack or broke fra bone fractions or alcoholic in intoxinations. And here these are the te therapy, how to cure patients. We decided not to put too much therapeutic means, just a few, just four drugs and so on and so forth, differentiated by colors. So that's quite easy, and here you see some how these things work together. So the patient who needs a bed, and that patient is gone a bit, oh well, his health state is not that good anymore, and he needs a, he needs a nurse, and the nurse done its work, so we know he's a flu, and uh, he needs a doctor, and that's his health part. Well, we have a little bit of time for it. And you see also the problem, the balloon bubble is not that big. You can't put as much information as you might like. So another thing what we learn from social gaming is that you really need an individual content, customization for, for the users. So we could put, can put in Dr. Knut Hartmann in, as uh, I done it in one minute, and Dr. Sabina Rahn, my co-worker here, also from the game. Of course, we have Dr. Superman and Dr. Punk. Yeah? All what you can we learn from games on Facebook, so such called social games, you need some, of course, high score. That's easy. But also achievements. You get the very first achievements after finishing the editor. Here I created a new doctor, and this looks fine. So, and the game will reward you over and over again. So we have lots of rewards, and we could customize things. So this is uh, the editor. You can alter the, the gender or the skin or some props like glasses. We, it's a very simple game. So what we did is to create several different hairstyles. So we can uh, change the color of the hair. It's very easy, so it's interchangeable. And we did it in four different versions, so we could look from him from behind, from the side, from front, and so forth. And also, what you have to do is to, to make it move, yeah? You have walk animation, lie animation, die animation, all kind of animation. So, it looked like it's, it's, a, it's a funny little game. It isn't. It took us half a year to produce all the content, which is required to have some, a kind of 3D game, yeah? My advice is do not make 3D games if you not have to do it. Yeah? And these kind of achievements. So we get lots of achievements. Lots. The number of clicks, how many patients you healed, how many times you do nothing in the game, yeah? how many patients you killed. Well, these are losses. Yeah? It's not your fault. So, this is about just a little sketch of the game. So I think the more, most important part of the talk is how to make a game, how we do it. So I said I um, do lectures on game design, I do lectures on game programming, and more importantly I do lectures on project management. And you see here, well it's about time, yeah? The term is not that long, it's just about 15 weeks. And you have to do one single game in 15 weeks. Well, 
it doesn't matter which tool you uh, use. It's a hard work. It's really a risky uh, thing. So I think the most important thing in game design is to create a new game. Something exciting and new, something which is really addictive. We, we talk about that, yeah? So how to do it? Well, the tools doesn't matter that much. Tools are just tools. What we are working on in that uh, game design course is we work on ideas. That's the critical thing. Tools are just tools. So we use, uh, for the majority of the students, they use action script, um, flash games. It's quite cool as you can get easily, quickly to the results. And it's fine as you have web games. And the other part of, uh, another part of the students is designing games for mobile devices, for the iPad, for the iPhone, and of course that's a little bit more technology driven. So, the important thing is teamwork. So you can't do a game on your own anymore. Even a simple casual game in 2D. It's impossible in 15 weeks. So, we do it in teams. Very important, make sure that there's a project man manager in the game team. Otherwise, nothing happens. Yeah? <laughs> then the majority of the work is not programming, it's artwork. You have to create all these assets which are presented in the game. That's about two thirds of the amount of work you have to spend in developing the games. Artwork, artwork, artwork. Yeah? So we have a lack, we have a, some kind of mixed course with programming and artworks so otherwise if you have just programmers um, well the game looks like programmer stuff yeah know that so and, uh, the most critical thing is the change requests so you developing a new idea you haven't got any idea uh, how to of, of, about the tool and you have new ideas all the time so you get change requests all the time so this raises problems. In the traditional way, you have to think a lot hard about what's your prop product, what's the look of your product like, or the features of your product, and then to go and make it. So it's, it's, this is, doesn't work that good in creating innovative things. So we first think hard about what's the product look like, what are these features, and then we Try to find out the most critical, the most, well, the most cool features and then to implement them completely. In a very short time, test it out, find out what's good, what's working, what's not working, and, yeah, replan again. And the nice thing with that kind of agile producing is that you've got a running prototype almost all the time. That's fine. It's really good. So, so we implemented the process of agile prototyping, and first of all, the, I force them not to program, not program. First, plan, design a good idea, present that idea. So, after two weeks in that course, the student have to present their first presentation, five minutes presentation, ten minutes discussion, and it's an elevator pitch. The game concept, the idea, and why it's cool, yeah? why it's different. Who is the target group? That's important. And then they have to create a game, de game design document. In the case of Dr. Vismos, the game design document was about 44 pages long, and it specifies everything in the game for the first 20 levels. 20 levels. So all the diseases all the attributes of the doctors, of the nurses, um, the rules. So it was all kind of tables. And that was the best part of the, of the game. And everything was clear so that you've got that vision of what you want to achieve for the game and you've got all what you need to produce that game. Yeah, that's cool. So then we implement the first prototype in just four weeks. And we could play it in the team. We give another four weeks to make a running prototype that someone else, not the team, could test. So 
after 10, 12 weeks, there is a big game fest where everyone tests every game. Yeah? And we make play testing, that means um, other players play the game. And the designers and the developers stand back and look how the players are using that game. That's quite interesting. And after that, run after that first initial test, we give, we give them two other weeks to improve the game. And you should end up with a complete game, which can be used by everyone, and which has, it's a little bit small, it's just have five minutes content, content, content. it's called vertical slice. So, and then that was the first, first job. Then we saw, well, it's a good game, we liked it, we really liked it, how to improve it. And the first requirement was more content. And therefore, we needed better tools. Yeah? It's not just implementing something. In the first version, we hard-coded everything in the code. Where's the wall standing? Yeah? In the level. And that, that doesn't work if you want to scale up. So we have to develop tools to create content for the game so that the developer could improve the code and that the art department could create more content and that everything is uh, decoupled. So we created some data structures so that the artwork department could design things in the game store the results as in an external file and that the game could later on load these levels. That was really cool and then we also want to have that customization that we developed the editor for the characters. That was the major part of the work. The other part which was very important was to get familiar with tools to communicate and to synchronize things. So if you work in a team of four people, they all try to work on the same piece of code. And they all try to, to, uh, to add more content. Well, that's quite hard. You could send an email to all of your colleagues and they could send uh, the change code to you back again. It won't work that good. So we, I took a little bit of time to teach them to use well, scalable things like Subversion, which is a nice program which allows you that everyone could work on a project. Everyone could change everything and that program then put everything together. Yeah, that's great. Now the is Git or just Dropbox to change things. So we communication. We found out that we need live meetings in real life. Yeah, no. <laughs> just a minute. So um, we use weekly scrums and power meetings where we all sit together to work together. So why we are using that viral marketing? Oh well, we are developing 15 play games a year. So they are all web games or they are all iPod games and at the credit section there is a link to the my university. Well that's my payment. That's the best thing of marketing I've ever had. Yeah? And we have students and we have too much students, uh, so we have to select. That's good. Yeah? So. And of course, I can go to fairs and present my course, and everyone is really excited. That's cool. So, final word, I want to present the idea of a new game. So, Dr. Business was in the news, in the newsletters, in the radio, and now some doctors and therapists get to know about Dr. Business, they have their own ideas of own games and now they wonder whether some, someone is able to implement it. Well, fine. I met Sabine Rahn. She is therapeut at the Cochlear Implant Center at Schleswig Kiel. And what they are doing is to replace the heal apparatus with an artificial one. Yeah? So they are a microphone, a speech processor and then a receiver inside the head and 
this uh, signal is then sent to the cochlea direct to the nervous system. So, when they do that operation, that's not the end of the story. You have to learn speaking and hearing once again. And you have to do it very early as there is a learning window till 12, 10, 12. Yeah, you can learn that signal processing, that association between abstract concepts and sounds, but it has to be done in the first 12 years. So we have to want to, well, to make games while the therapeuts making games in the traditional way. They have created card games and so on and so on. Put it onto the computer and make it fun. So that's our idea for the next half year or next one and a half year. It's time for question. I hope you enjoyed the talk. Thank you very much. Any question? No? I have one question. We need to actually. I think it's a very interesting concept. Uh, most people have developed this video game for health. I was just wondering if you wanted to use this or to export this idea or concept to other universities, do you think it's possible? And how would you go about doing that? Let's say in the island or in other countries, if we wanted to actually use the same kind of concept you're using, you know, how would you go what is it something that's possible to do? Yeah, so the community of uh, researchers and teachers creating in game design is not that big, so we know each other and the majority of us works in that kind of agile scrum process. That's quite quite appropriate for, for developing new things. It's risky. Yeah? It has to be quick and that kind of test cycle is very, very uh, important for all kind way of, you have to communicate with with the experts. They want to know what 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 the game is all about, yeah? And then to say, oh no, I don't like it. They don't know before the thing we have the first prototype. They don't know what they want to. Yeah? They know, oh no, I, I like that and no, I don't like that. It's always a problem. Yes. When you you don't know what you want until you actually see it and you see yeah, right. uh, it. Um, what, what about the timetable? Did your students all manage to, to stay at the time frame they designed at the beginning and, and get all that things done? Yeah. 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 All of them? The, 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 okay. the, almost all of them. Uh, the problem is just when the, when the team is breaking. Okay. Yeah? Or uh, if they don't have it programming. So there are four designers and no programmers. So that, and it's, just, it's, it's just a team mix-up problem. Okay. But everything else, I'm strict at deadlines. But deadline no. is deadline is deadline, and if not, you're dead. Yeah. So <laughs> you know very early if you're out or not, okay. and that's quite motivating. So the nice thing in developing games is it's, it's fun. It's fun to play. It's also fun to develop. Okay. Yeah, and so they are so engaged. They are so motivated. Sometimes I have to say, well, slow down, <laughs> reduce. Yeah, think not about what to do more, but what could be killed which feature, which is not that important. Yeah, I have a question about the target groups for the optimism game. Uh, do you intend to implement it at the hospital for for better hospital? Um, workflow, etc. That kind of thing has, has it been tried out at hospitals. Doctors and nurses playing the same, or well, what are your target groups? <laughs> <laughs> right. So it's, it's it's really just a game about healthcare. So maybe you might learn a little bit better uh, what the problems of nurses and doctors are. How how really hard the, the daily work in the hospital is. You might but it's never intended. So it was just intended to have fun. Okay. <laughs> so we never had a real user but we're not trying hard to get one. Mm -hmm. yeah? Another question actually. In terms of learning, do you think they learn both programming, but, sorry, is it interest both programming and do you think as well that they got a better knowledge of 
hospitals and procedures. How do you think it improved their knowledge and motivation? And did you maybe measure that? Or? Um, I like, uh, so in my point of view, developing games is the best way to understand how to create a complex system and an interactive system. So the tools is um, just, well, it doesn't matter that much. I did it um, teaching programming for children in the age of between 10 to 12 with Game Maker. I did it. It worked. In four, uh, four days, four hours a day, yeah. we created a game with children. And for me, it's uh, well, the target group is to, uh, well, Auf Deutsch jetzt mal uh, die, die Einstellung zur Informatik über das Programmieren ändern. So change the att attribute attitude, attitude of, of, of the students yeah. so that they think, well, computer science, that's boring. Yeah? Good. You just motivate them to. Yeah. Okay. So in, in a way that's a kind of motivational <coughs> process. Any other question? Okay, uh, last question here. Yeah. <laughs> What do you think about the, uh, let's say, bridge to, to the market? I mean, developing uh, a game is one thing, but bringing it to the market is another thing. Is there uh, also something yep. uh, uh, in those projects uh, integrated? Yeah, so we have a very small game company in, in Flensburg. And so with the head of that game company, I made an agreement that we made a competition for the best uh, game. And there's uh, some kind of uh, affair where some kind of game fest and everyone selects um, the best prototype. And the best prototypes are offered to be presented in that online store. So actually it worked. Actually it worked. But the problem is that in order to have a really good problem, a pro product, you have to work on it. Yeah, support, add new yeah, features. Yeah. And I have students which really try to build up their own company. So we have that. We've got two of those projects which now are entrepreneurs running their own companies. And hopefully they will survive. Well, they are good. They develop my courses, yeah. Okay, um, I think we'll have a break right now. Some of you may be quite uh, thirsty or hungry, so uh, we'll have a 15 minute break. Uh, thank you again for your presentation. That's great.